Okay, uh, today we're going to have a look at building domes underground. Um, I oftentimes get asked, uh, are the plans that I provide suitable for, um, you know, I want to build a structure and then I want to cover it in soil and put some grass on it and it's, so it's effectively underground. Will it take the weight? So this video is going to be just a quick sort of uh, overview of if you're wanting to build uh, a dome underground what's involved and what my advice is going forward right first we're going to take a look at the uh, advantages obviously domes are the perfect shape for building underground because uh, like an egg um, the spherical structures are much stronger if you were to have a flat something with a flat roof or a pitched roof or any other shape even a tunnel uh, they're much less stable than a dome under compressive loads of soil so the shape is the most efficient for going underground so that's a good start the next thing is the build method we, sh we need to take a look at it's not important which frequency you use because it, it's an approximation of a hemisphere that we're making whatever frequency we, the only difference with the frequency is, is the size that you're trying to build if you're trying to build a bigger one you probably want to go for a higher frequency okay let's look at the stresses uh, on a structure that's underground okay if we look at a, at a dome um, and we look at the pressure of the soil on the surface it's not necessarily all going to be totally even because at the lower levels uh, it's the, the the forces are mostly down but uh, what we need to be aware of is uh, if we have compression from the weight of the soil onto a node that causes compression up this strut towards the next node now uh, this is fine unless you don't use strong enough materials if you use for example anything that can um, explosively fail like timber can snap concrete that's not steel reinforced that can um, crack and and burst so you want to avoid materials that fracture suddenly and you want to go for more uh, materials that bend when they fail so uh, metal is good for that for example it'll bend in steadily and slowly because if you uh, if you put a if this structure has no metal in it it's just wood for example uh, you don't really know how strong your nodes are um, but it, once a node fails it can cause a catastrophic failure of the structure once this node has been popped past the uh, horizontal all of this as you can see turns into tension this joints broken it's forced apart with tension so it's no longer under compression and uh, these can, these would then just f be forced in with all the muck right on top of your head now if you give us a chance I'll probably throw some plans together uh, for um, something that works underground what I would consider my best options for working underground anything with steel steel if you have steel under wood that would be fine because even if you do if you would shattered uh, your steel then that yields gently so you don't crush get crushed inside the dome if, if it does feel um, with DIY building uh, it's important to build in some margins of errors uh, it, it's okay for the building industry who have uh, engineers and everything to calculate everything and even then things still go wrong how many bridges have you seen falling down because of uh, human error or bad calculations or the wrong products being used so we have to be careful as DIY builders not to get ourselves killed so I would recommend uh, steel reinforcement or some form of steel in the structure that yields gently uh, if it does fail the, ho the whole idea is that it doesn't fail but you have to cover yourself uh, if you're going to build something underground right there are two other things to consider first one is moisture let's have a look at moisture if you're building underground uh, y you have soil right the way over the top uh, maybe this wouldn't be such a big deal if you were just having a, like a green roof one but if you're building underground what can happen is if for example there's a clay 
uh, underneath here uh, and you get heavy rain the water table can rise you would have your damp proof membrane go along here and up the side there and then you would have a waterproof membrane over the top and it's very likely that you would have you'd have a more waterproof membrane right over there it's very likely that you would have an overlap and you think that you're good but if the if you get heavy rain the water table can rise and push water through this gap here so when you uh, have when you install your um, damp proof and you have to go nice and high over here from underneath and make that this has to be as sound as a boat so you have to have no it's no good having cuts in it and taping them over thinking that everything will be fine uh, and and if you had any gravel and you got any of your uh, damp proof membrane punctured it would be uh, you would get terrible leaks because all of this water here is under quite high pressure it's under the pressure of all this soil so any water that can't comes over your damp proof membrane would would leak badly into the dome and then you want obviously a good overlap of uh, if you're having an overlap and this has to uh, come above anywhere where you think the any water table would rise to uh, it's it might not be an issue if um your uh building are high up and there's no risk or if you're building on um sand uh, gravel anything where there's no risk of the water table rising but it is something to bear in mind and the other thing is ventilation you need to um ventilate the structure probably cut a couple of holes you've got to be wary that you don't cut through you through the damp proof and you end up with leaks so leaks are uh, you have to make absolutely you could fiberglass the whole outside like a boat that's the way i would treat it i would treat it like a boat um and uh any windows or anything like that i mean um oh there's one final thing that you need to be aware of if you cover just the back end for example and you left it you, you wanted to um have you've got your ventilation and some light coming in this way uh, you need to be careful of that as well because what happens is that the all the weight is pushing on the dome on one side it's a bit like oh god it's a bit like squeezing a spot it, it it all concentrates all the compression in this side of the dome into tension on this side so they if it's not strong enough this could burst open so you need to be that's the only thing other thing you need to be aware of uh, obviously if you're going to build underground um build with not loads and loads of soil over the top uh, you don't put as you know um two meters of soil over the top uh, because you're adding significantly to your uh, complexity your uh, margin of errors and everything like that if you have uh, not too much soil over the top and you overbuild a bit so that you're sure about everything and you give it your well watertight uh, and you allow for ventilation you should be good to go to live underground uh, thanks for watching and don't kill yourselves until i see you in the next video